And here's the name of today's message. Deliver me from spiritual snakes. Why don't you just patronize me by repeating that and say, deliver me from spiritual snakes. If you can remember, you read a little bit about Eve in the garden, her having a conversation with the serpent, which was really Satan in disguise. And he was going back and forth with them, trying to talk them out of what God had said. He says in Genesis 3 and 1, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals of the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, this is what the devil in disguise says to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree of the garden? And I, I want to take a minute just to let you know that the enemy is a master deceiver. In other words, he loves to lure us into taking the wrong steps. Did you hear what I said, Freedom? I said the devil loves to lure us into taking the wrong steps. And I know you're transitioning from worship, but I need you to just testify if you've ever been lured by the enemy to take a wrong step. Amen, somebody. I just, I'm not trying to get in your business, but confession is good sometimes. I have been lured. Amen. And I, we don't blame the enemy, but we must know that he is at work pulling the strings. He's at work having conversations in our minds and he goes to Eve while she's sitting there looking at something God told her she wasn't supposed to have, which is a great point for me to start. You got to be careful that we aren't helping the enemy harm you. You got to be careful that you aren't aiding and abetting the enemy because he watches us to see what we're interested in. The Bible says that our eyes and our ears are gates that have to be guarded. And I'm telling you, the more I look at the Internet, the more I look at television, the more I listen to music, I'm recognizing that, boy, if you don't guard your eyes and your ears, you're going to have a whole lot of stuff attach itself to your spirit that you're going to have to fight and struggle with sooner or later. Can I get a witness? Always remember this, that the devil lures us by changing what God has clearly said to us. I'm already preaching. The devil lures us how? By changing what God has clearly said to us. God clearly said to Adam, and then Adam told Eve, this tree right here, don't touch it. Here comes the devil. Did God really say? And here's where I want you to understand how important it is to know God's word. If you don't know what God said, you can be tricked into believing God didn't say what he said. This is why you got to read your Bible every day so that when the enemy challenges you, you can do just like Jesus did after his 40 days of fasting. He came back with the word of God when Satan tried to challenge him with the word. You can't use the word if you don't know the word. Amen, somebody? And let me tell you something. Them little scriptures you learned in Sunday school are not going to get you through, guys. Them little scriptures you remember when you first got saved ain't going to cut it. Every day you ought to be diving in the word. Somebody say, every day I should be diving in the word. It brings me to Psalms 37 and 23. It says this, the Lord guides us in the way that we should go and protects those who please him. I don't know if you caught that. The Lord does what? He guides us in the way that we should go. He does two things, though. He guides us in the way that we should go. And then he does what? He protects us. Can I get five folks to understand that the protection of God is really important to your life? How many of you, and I shouldn't say how many, I won't, I won't put that out there, too much. How many of you ever had a, a good guard dog? Yeah. Not, not the mud tied to the tree, that didn't bark, but you ever had a good guard dog? Yeah. And, and good guard dogs don't have to be big, they just have to alert you when somebody's approaching your house. Yeah. Some of y'all can have these little bitty chihuahuas, and they, they, they ain't much of a dog, but, 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 but if somebody come to your door, they will bark. I, I grew up uh, going over to Pastor Tisha's house, and, and they had this Doberman named Duke. Uh, he stood about, I would say, maybe four feet tall. It was the biggest Doberman I've ever seen. It looked like something out of a laboratory. And before somebody could ring the doorbell, he would start barking. And he would bark when somebody pulled up in the driveway. And it didn't matter whether it was day or night, he would let the family know someone is approaching the house. I need to tell you something, that God's word will give you an alarm, come on, when you got something approaching you that don't need to enter your spiritual house. Good God Almighty. Who am I preaching to? That's got to get in the word so that your alarm system stays up there. And do not ignore the alarm. Come on, come on. 
Many of us can testify that had we listened to the alarm that went off when we met him or met her, we might not have, I ain't got no church in here today. You can't tell me there was no alarm, but no, you let the, you let the cologne get you. You let the BBL get you, I ain't got no church in here. Honey, you better learn to trust your spirit. And if something don't feel right, run, 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 and watch God reveal to you. There was a reason why something didn't feel right. And maybe I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe y'all don't have anybody here dealing with spiritual snakes. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about when I talk about spiritual snakes. Spiritual snakes are the things that the enemy uses to get us off track. And, and, and oftentimes, it's, it's not people all the time, because we like to throw everything on people. Sometimes a, a spiritual snake is the spirit of depression. Teach Pastor Troy. Sometimes the spirit of, of, of a snake is, is that, uh, uh, that spirit of loneliness. Here's one. Sometimes the spirit of a snake is the, the spirit of defeat, where you feel so defeated like your life is never going to get any better. What you need to understand is that these are serpents that are trying to beguile you, but trying, trying to trick you, trying to seduce you out of what God has said. I don't care how poor you are right now. If God promised you wealth, you need to hold on to God delivers your wealth. I don't care how sick you are right now. If God promised you health, you need to hold on till you get your health. Never give up what good God Almighty. Never give up what God has promised because you're going through. And listen, I know what it's like to be in that dark place and it seems like God ain't going to come through. But I have been living this life long enough to know that if you hold on long enough, God always delivers what he said he was going to deliver and it's always right on time. Can I get a witness? Tell you that, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Can I go just a little deeper? Satan loves to do what? Lure us into doing what? Taking wrong steps. He does that how? By changing what God has said. God does what? God guides us and protects us by what? Ordering our steps. Now I just said something. God guides us and protects us by ordering our steps. You got to understand something. There are benefits when you let God order your steps. What are you telling me, Pastor? It pays to obey God. And it's not always easy, but I tell you, if you do what God said, do your life will be better in the long run. Can I get a yes? You need to know, though, that when you don't obey God, there are consequences and repercussions. And oftentimes, it's not so much that God is punishing us. It's just that we've got to pay the price for disobedience. We love to blame God for the things we go through, or we blame the devil. And sometimes, it's neither one of them. Sometimes, it's the consequences and the repercussions. If you leave here today and drink a quart of Clorox bleach, and you get sick, and you get rushed to the hospital, and they pump your stomach out. Who's it for? Say it. But how many times do we do things we ain't got no business doing, then when the results come back on us, we try to blame everybody except ourselves. Somebody say there are benefits and blessings for those who let God order their steps. Would you like to see some of these benefits and blessings? Yes, I want to show them to you. Psalms 37 and 23 says, the steps of a good man. Now, this is not a gender-specific scripture. So this can read the steps of a good person, a good woman, a good child. The uh, steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. Somebody say ordered. Lord. Give me your undivided attention. How many of you, when you go through the drive-thru, you like to get what you order? Yeah. Come on, that's everybody. Yeah. Nobody likes to go to the drive-thru, place your order, and then by faith, you don't even look in the bag. By faith, you drive all the way across town. By faith, you sit down to eat your meal and you discover them folks did not fulfill your order. And it wouldn't be such a big issue if you didn't pay for it. I wish I had a church in here. I'm saying something. I hope you catch it. So when God gives us steps that he's ordered, he's expecting for his orders to be fulfilled because Jesus paid for that on the cross. Good God Almighty. Somebody say, get your, get your steps right. The Bible says that God delights in that person's way. Watch verse 24. It gets better, though he fall. Now, I need y'all to catch this. This is good news. This is good news. God says, even though I order your steps, sometimes you're going to fall. You don't hear the church preach this because we want you to think that if God is ordering your steps, that means you never fall. Lie. The Bible says you can still fall even though God is ordering. I got some confusion on this side. 
Pastor, how do I follow the God order my steps? Because the devil is real. Plus, your flesh is a mess. I ain't got no church in here. God says, though he may fall, watch this, watch this. He shall not, oh, this is good to me. He shall not be utterly cast down. This is what I love about God. That's why I like the relationship I have with God. I need everybody to pay attention to me. When you fall, never give up your faith. Ah! Jesus, I had to learn this the hard way. Oh, you're going to fall. Let me quit playing to myself. You're going to fall. There ain't a saved person in this room that can stand up and say, Pastor, since I've been saved, I've never fallen. Not a one. Am I right? So if everybody falls after salvation, how in the world do we make it to heaven? We make it to heaven because God says, as long as you stick with me, I'll stick with you. And even though you fall, I'll snatch you back up and put you back on your feet. Mm, this is what the devil hates because the devil fell once and he was done. We fall a few times. But grace and mercy gets renewed every day. It says, for the Lord upholds him, watch this, with his hand. Verse 25, it gets better. I have been young. Oh, I remember the first time I, I heard this in Sunday school. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. I, I, I'm understanding what he's saying now. Amen. I was young and, and now I'm old and I have yet to have seen the righteous forsaken. You, you missed what I just said. David says, I have yet to have seen the righteous forsaken. You still missed it. You still missed it. See, see, the reason why a lot of folks won't get saved and won't stick with God and won't keep coming to church because they didn't tell you righteous people fall too. They don't, they don't tell you that. David, we just got through talking about the steps of a good man. We got to talk about a righteous man. And God says, I am not. David says, I've never seen a righteous man forsaken. And then here's why I serve God. Know his seed begging bread. I need everybody to listen to me. If you are a parent, you need to, you really need to tune into what I'm saying now. Amen. Parents, don't you recognize that you have the ability to change the future trajectory of your children's Amen. life if you will just give your life. You don't hear me, but you're going to hear me. It is one of the main reasons why I serve God and won't quit and I get up when I fall. Why? Because I want my children to be impacted by my salvation. Some of you got children right now and they are going to the left and they're going to the right and they're doing everything they ain't got no business doing. If you gave your life to Jesus, if you raised them up in the way that they should go, I guarantee you one day they will bow to the almighty God. I guarantee it. Honey, you can look at that and say, it's all right. Go on, go on, son. Go on, daughter. Your days are numbered because I trained you up in the way that you should go. Your days are numbered. God has made me a promise that my descendants will never have to beg for bread and the righteous will never be forsaken. Which means you can also change the financial trajectory of your children's life. Never seen the descendants of the righteous Begging for bread. Guys, I'm, I'm telling y'all something, and I hope you don't get jelly, but man, my kids are doing way better than I was doing at their age. <laughs> it's crazy, man. The, the things my kids are doing now, man, is I, I, I wasn't able to do some of that stuff till I was 40, 45 years old. See, that's what you want. You want your seed, watch this, to succeed. Come on, I'm preaching, I gotta go. What are you trying to do, Pastor? I'm trying to give every parent in here a reason to fight those spiritual snakes in your life. You got a lot hanging on the line. Could that be the reason why the devil keeps bothering you? It ain't about you. It's about your kids. Come on, somebody. He would love to have your sons and your daughters, but you got to put your foot down and say, nah, devil, you had me long enough. You will not have my children. Amen, somebody? Can I go just a little deeper? Now the message is going to get a little tight, but don't, don't, you, don't, you, don't you shout me down. God doesn't just order our steps. Matter of fact, why don't you say that? Say, God doesn't. God doesn't. Come on, say it again. God doesn't, God doesn't. just order our steps. Order our steps. God, also God also orders, orders. our stops. Y'all stop. right say, I know it's going to, y'all finna switch up on me now. Y'all finna, I know it was good. That's why I ain't give a three or four claps, but I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to say it again. God does not just order our steps. God orders our stops. Because we don't mind God ordering our steps, but we don't want God telling us when to stop. I wish I had. I got to stay focused. I got too much ground to cover. Here's what I want to tell y'all guys. It's a package deal. 
If God can't order your stops, God will stop ordering your steps. Preach, Pastor Troy Wynn Sr. Y'all ain't got to clap today. I'm good. Tell you never, you better listen. That's what's wrong with some folks today. You won't let God order your stops. You act like you can't hear God. You act like God ain't talking. And you know, good in time where ain't that much bad luck in the world. Come on, somebody. It ain't roots. It ain't no hex on you. You are not listening to God when God says stop. When you fall, God ain't mad. It's when you won't get up that God got a problem. I wish I had a church. Go ahead, Pastor. They ain't feeling, but I feel myself. You say you got it in the poop? Yeah, you know it. Genesis. God ordered Adam and Eve's steps. Told them what to do. Told them what to enjoy. But he didn't leave them with just steps. He said, before I dip on out of this garden, let me give you your stops. Do not eat from this tree. It ain't going to do you no good. The day you do, you shall surely die. It's amazing how Adam and Eve are just like kids are today. Why is it that when you tell kids not to do something? I ain't got no real church. I ain't no parents in here today. <laughs> For some reason, something on the inside of them make them want to do it. My daddy told me not to do it, and I did it anyway. And it's the same way sometimes as adults. My daddy told me not to do it, and I did it anyway, and that's the reason why I'm looking like I'm, y'all ain't gonna clap, but I'm preaching good. You better learn to let God order your stops, because let me tell you something. When God says stop, he's doing it because he loves you. I asked myself today, what, what happens when we don't stop when God says stop? And the only thing I come up with was mayhem in the making. When God says stop and you keep going, you wind up married to somebody that you never was supposed to be married to. When God, you ain't got to clap. I can't help you bottom the church, but I'm going to preach it anyway. When God says stop and you don't stop, you wind up with five different children with five different baby daddies. You ain't going to clap, but I got to preach the truth. It's so quiet in here today. It's rough, but I got to do it. See, God is saying stop because he loves you. God says stop because he cares for you. But no, nah, can't nobody tell you nothing. You have to learn the hard way. Honey, I'm at a place in my life, I want to learn from your mistakes, not mine. Amen, somebody? I'm too old to be learning from my mistakes now. So I like watching y'all. I'm like, okay, I won't do that. Amen, somebody? It's so quiet in here today. Somebody say, he preaching to you. I bet they ain't even look at you, did they? Say this with me. Say, when we reject. Come on, say, when we reject. God's guidance, God's guidance, which is God's protection. God's you missed it. I'm trying to go forward, but I'm stuck. God's guidance right. is God's protection. Right. Come on, do you hear me? Yeah. Just like as a parent, when you're guiding your children, what are you trying to do? Yeah. So when God's guiding, God's not trying to be a party pooper. God's not trying to keep you from having fun. You can have fun and live this life. But there's some things that are just not good for us. There are some people that are just not good for us. Oh, you ain't going to say nothing, man. There are some environments where your spirit has to struggle. Okay, y'all don't like that kind of teaching. You better let God guide you because he's trying to protect you. Because when we don't let God guide us and protect us, we become guided and protected by something that's not God. Now, I, 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 didn't, I didn't think this was going to be received the first time I said it. Let me say it again. When you don't let God guide you and protect you, something else steps in and starts to guide you and protect you. What are you trying to tell me, Pastor? Sometimes you're protected by spiritual snakes that are keeping you from the good things of God coming into your life. Ah, go ahead, Pastor. They don't want to hear this. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to preach and go home. This is what happens when we don't let God order our stops. Romans 1 and 24. Romans 1 and 24. I'll give you two different translations. Peep this, Heather. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. I, I, don't, I don't expect this. This will, be a, this will be the quiet part of my sermon. We don't tell you enough that when you don't listen to God when he says stop, that God will turn you over to do whatever you want to do because God's not going to wrestle with you. I don't know. Listen, I'm going to preach it. God's not going to fight with you. The Bible says that God will turn you over to a reprobated mind. You look at people and you wonder how could they do some of the things they do? 
I believe they've been turned over to a rep. Y'all ain't gonna say them, but I'm gonna pitch this truth. How does a grown man have sex with a six month old baby? I don't care about y'all clapping in there. I gotta preach with God. How does a grown man have sex with a six month old baby? That ain't normal. That ain't natural. That joke could be turned over to a reprobate in mind. I don't care what nobody say. And for all you older men chasing these young girls, you probably been turned over to with your nasty self. I don't care about y'all clap today. I'm reading the handwriting on the wall. All these grown women out here, grown women want to be loved. And you right here chasing a 12 year old. Somebody you can manipulate. The devil is alive and I bind you in the name of Jesus if you're here. I command that spirit to come out of your nasty self, brother. You gonna mess around and touch the wrong girl is what's going on. Let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. You gonna mess around and touch somebody's daughter and they gonna do the time for the crime. I'm telling y'all. You see these things happening all around us and you wonder how can people do the things they do. You got folk killing their babies. Mothers drowning their children. Children killing their parents. How you kill the person that gave you life? Reprobated mind. I don't, I don't care how bad you are. You ought to be thankful that you got a mama. Okay, I'm losing my class. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. What happens when God orders our stops and we keep stepping? God gives us up to uncleanness. Through the lust of our own hearts to dishonor our own bodies between ourselves. Here's the New Living Translation. So God abandoned them. See, see, I'm about to say something. I'm about to say something that's going to tell church theology. They told you God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. Look how it got quiet in here then. Your whole life, you've been told God will never leave you. Don't look at me like that. The Bible says that's true for those who let God order their steps and order their stops. But when you don't let God order your stops, it does not apply. Okay. I'll go with the Bible because you're looking at me crazy. Okay. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desire. And as a result, <laughs> they did vile and degrading things with each other's lives. Look how quiet it got in there. I'm going to say this, and it's not going to go over well. But there are some things that are sexually unnatural. It's so quiet in here today. Now, I ain't talking about two folks that's married and it's just the two of y'all because the Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled. God said when you're married, have fun. Enjoy each other, just the two of y'all. You can't add no third party. You ain't going to clap because the world tell you, do what feel good. You can't bring nobody in to spice it up because you're going to mess around and get spiced out. Y'all ain't ready, amen, somebody. But God says, in that, in that arrangement, you enjoy yourself. But the world now tells us, if it feel good, do it. Yes. The world tells us, if you want to sleep with a dog, sleep with a dog. And I ain't talking about a man, I'm talking about an actual dog. Yes. You all don't pay attention to laws and legislations. Yes. But there is actually legislation in motion right now to make it legally for a person to marry a dog. Yes. They're pushing it right now. And I promise you, it's going to happen if Jesus don't come back soon. Yes. Mr. Pastor, I don't believe that'll happen. Are you not looking at the news? That's why they want you to take, you know, because the dog is a part of the family. He is a family member. He might be a family member, but God said that we should not be engaged in bestiality. Y'all ain't going to clap, but I'm going to preach it. When the last time you heard that? You and Roscoe got a thing going on, and it ain't natural. Let me go, because somebody looking crazy. Can I give y'all a secret about sin? Now, I know a little bit about sin, because I have sinned. Amen, somebody? I've sinned quite a bit, amen? I, I have a PhD in sinology. 
Oh, I ain't the only one, amen. Some of y'all graduated magnum cum laude for the University of the Sin. Don't try to play me. So what we do now on this side, we try to use this knowledge to help folks and help ourselves. Here's what I know about sin, Mother Oliver. Sin usually looks and feels so good that it's hard to accept that it can be wrong. I ain't getting not one clap on that though. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I say that again? Sin usually looks and feels so good that it's hard to accept that it can be wrong. And I need somebody to hear me today. God sent you here because he loves you enough to help you. Be careful when sin looks and feels good because it can be hard to hear God say stop. I'll clap for myself. I'll clap for It can be hard to hear God stop because you be talking about my body is calling. All right. Just because it feels good and looks good does not mean that it cannot be vile or it cannot grieve the spirit of God. And listen, I know nobody's perfect, but some point in your life, you got to look at God's word and say, you know what? I got to do better. Come on, somebody. Turn these fans off for me. Somebody say, I got to do better because I don't want to miss heaven. Say this. Say, if God can't order your stops, he'll stop ordering your steps. Mm. Now say this, and I hope everybody catches it. Say your stops, your stops. Determine, determine your steps. Your steps. I can't rush through that. I can't rush through that. Your stops, your stops. Determine, determine your steps. Do you know how many people are locked up in prison right now who would not be in prison had they... Do you know how many people are in the cemetery right now would not be dead, they would be amongst us if they had of only stop. You've dealt with some folks and you told them to stop. Amen. You say, ah, you better stop. Yeah. You're you, you getting too far, then you're getting too wild. And what they normally do, they block you out. Yeah. Why? Because there comes a point where it gets hard to hear the truth yeah. when you're more in love with whatever it is that you're doing. I want to say from this platform, I don't care what wrong I do, tell me the truth. Amen, somebody? I don't care what sin I'm guilty of, tell me the truth. Because as long as I am aware of the truth, I got a fighting chance. Amen, somebody? I got a fighting chance to overcome the devil. I got a fighting chance to defeat these serpents. But the worst person in the world is somebody you can't tell the truth to. And we now live in a society where folk don't want to know the truth. People would rather you lie to them and make them feel good. Churches all over America get packed out if you lie to them. If you tell people what they want to hear, but they'll come and they'll bring their friends and they'll pack. They'll be, they'll be wall to wall, folks. Tell me what I want to hear, pastor. But if you're one of those pastors that tell folks what they don't want to hear, they're like, I don't know if I'm going to go today. What are you talking about? What are you? Serpent. That don't, that don't sound like nothing going to make me shot today. I believe I stay home. I, uh, I go to school today. We're gone. Man. But when we standing in heaven and you sitting in hell, you'll figure out you probably should have came to church that Sunday. Because I believe this kind of word can save your life. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean you're not going to fall. But what it does, it teaches you to have the mindset to never, ever excuse yourself because of what you're doing. I can show you how to get to heaven. And it's not by being perfect. It's by being transparent before the almighty God every day that you live. First John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins to God, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all the right. All you got to do is tell God what you're doing. But the world tells us ain't nothing wrong. The world tells us everything is all right. And we are now living in a blurry society. One of my friends tell me all the time uh, that, that, that if the church don't teach the truth. Come on. Where folk gonna learn it at? If the church don't tell our young folk right and wrong, where they gonna learn it at? So the church has got to be the one place that we stand flat-footed and say what God said. If don't nobody want to hear it, we still got to say it. I dare somebody say, tell me the truth, Pastor. You'll probably end up in heaven. Can I go deeper? Now I need you to know there are two types of spiritual snakes. And I'm getting ready to close because some of y'all looking mighty tough today. But it's all good. I'm happy. Two types of spiritual snakes. Would you like to know where they are? Yes, sir. Don't get that quiet. I don't get nervous. You get that quiet. 
Somebody say vipers, vipers. and pythons. And python. I'm preaching Ben y'all amen, but you'll catch up with it in a few minutes. What kind? Vipers and pythons. Now, I don't like snakes. Let me be very transparent. I hate them. I can't stand them. And I think there's something wrong with people that have them as pets. When I see a snake, I'm not trying to identify it. Somebody told me, don't care that that's a rat snake. Huh, what'd you say? <laughs> Sorry, I ain't hear you. Cause I just don't feel snakes like that. And there's nothing wrong with having one as a pet. I'm just messing with Sammy. But in the spirit realm, you cannot afford to have spiritual snakes in your life. Vipers are different because vipers strike you. Don't miss the revelation. Vipers strike you so fast that sometimes you don't even know you've been struck. You've been hit by a smooth criminal. A viper will strike you with their injection and their poison. Watch this. Leads to a quick death. You ain't got to say, man, I know I'm in there. And sometimes the spiritual snakes that you're dealing with are so dangerous that their assignment is to take you out quickly before you reach your destiny. That's why some of you are fighting with demons that are on you every day. And you're fighting with devils that will not give you a reprieve. They will not give you a break because their assignment is to take you out before you wise up. That's why God keeps bringing you to word churches so that you can see that you're not dealing with something that can just be brushed off. You're not dealing with something that can just be laughed at. Some of us are fighting some real spiritual snakes that are trying to take us out before we reach our destiny. Watch out for the vipers in your life. But let me tell you something worse than a viper. A python. See, a viper is pretty transparent. Yes. A viper does not try to pretend, it does not try to cozy up to you, it doesn't try to chat with you, it doesn't try to be friends with you. A viper is always a viper. But church, you better watch out for them pythons. I'm about to preach myself happy now. You better watch out for them pythons because pythons don't initially come up on you and start striking. Pythons look to come up on you and wrap themselves, I ain't got no church in here today. They like to wrap themselves around you and make you feel comfortable. And some of you want to be held so badly that you're about to be killed by a python. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Everybody that got arms don't belong around you. Amen, somebody? Hey. Better get you one of them pillars, amen. And oh, I wish I had a church, amen. Watch out for the python because he'll creep up on you and he'll wrap himself around you and make you feel safe. Preach, Pastor Troy. He'll make you feel loved. He'll make you feel like everything is all right. But what you don't know is that as he's wrapping himself around you, teach Holy Ghost. He squeezed. Come on, sis. We can preach it together, baby. He's squeezing tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. You better watch out for the spiritual snakes in your life that the longer they remain, the harder it is for you to breathe. God Almighty. Some of y'all been fighting stuff so long that it's almost got you constricted. Well, you can't move. Why? Because it's going to squeeze you until it squeezes the life out of you. It's what the Bible calls, watch this, a stronghold. Teach, Pastor, you in there today. I don't care what nobody say. The viper strikes you and takes you out with a quick death. Teach, Pastor. The python squeezes you. He gets a stronghold on you that leads to a slow death. And some of you are dying slowly. I don't expect to get many claps. But you see it every day. You can look at some of your classmates and some of your friends. I can't help you ball in the church. I must preach the living truth. Some of you can look at your kinfolk. Some of them younger than you, but they dying a slow death. Your body was not meant to party seven days a week. Your body was not meant to be high seven days a week. You ain't gonna clap. Your body wasn't meant to get drunk every day. It's how you 40 looking 80? I ain't got no church in here. And I hate to bust y'all black folk bubble talking about black don't crack. Some of y'all black is broke. Amen. Y'all the black don't crack. You's a liar. If it don't crack, it ruptures. Amen, somebody. It tears. Let me go because somebody didn't like that. Your body is designed to worship God. Your body is designed to reflect the glory of God. 
I believe that the longer you're saved, the better you ought to look. Okay, four claps and one, yeah, I'll keep going. But when you got those pythons squeezing your life out, you don't even realize it, that it's a slow death. And just let me throw this out and keep moving. Watch out for the people. I ain't going to stay here long, but I got to say this because it needs to be said. Watch out for the people that are like pythons. I ain't going to stay here long, but I got to say it. 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 Well, what kind of people are them, Pastor? They're the kind of folk that squeeze everything out of you, but don't put nothing in you. I'm going to go. Somebody say the vipers and the pythons are like past sins. Like current sins, like addictions and habits. Low self-esteem is a python. Some of y'all got to get your self-esteem together and stop depending on somebody to tell you you cute and you handsome. You got to know on the inside that you are the bomb.com. Come on, somebody. You got to know on the inside that I am wonderfully made. I am somebody, and it has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with clothes. It has everything to do with attitude. Y'all don't want to hear me. You wind up committing suicide because you thought somebody was supposed to tell you you were cute. You better tell yourself you're cute. Get your self-esteem up and say what God says about you. I am what God says I am. He ain't going to call you bougie, but that's all right. I'd rather be bougie than to be buried. Amen, somebody? So call me what you want to call me, but I love myself. When I didn't love myself, I let people talk to me any kind of way. When I didn't love myself, I let people treat me in a kind of way. But it's something about when you get some self-love, you would tell folk to get to stepping and you'd be like, go on, don't even worry about it. I ain't got no church in there. Somebody said low self-esteem. There's a python and a viper. Depression. Feelings of defeat. These are all spiritual snakes. See, let me show you something. Spiritual snakes are drawn to something. Bring me my snake. I got a snake back there, y'all. Y'all ready for this? I'm going to throw them in the audience, so be, be ready. They got scared. They ain't a real snake. Amen, somebody? Somebody say, snakes, snakes. have a secret. <laughs> Would you like to know the secret? Spiritual snakes are drawn to our spiritual breaks. <laughs> It'll take a few minutes for it to register in your cerebral cortex. Every one of us in this room has spiritual breaks. Places that we've been broken spiritually. For some it was a molestation at a young age. For some it's the absence of a father in your life and now you don't understand what a male masculine moral model looks like. So you try to fulfill other options and other alternatives in life. See the enemy looks for the breaks in your life. Some of us are broken from poverty. So when you're broken from poverty, the enemy looks at you and he tries to find ways to get into that poverty mindset to keep you broke, but have you looking like you're wealthy. Come on, somebody. It's quiet in here now. Spiritual snakes are drawn to what? They're drawn to our spiritual breaks where we're broken spiritually. And today, you better take inventory. Don't you try to fool nobody. Where have you been broken spiritually? Some of you have been broken spiritually through church hurts. The enemy, the enemy works on this one overtime. He'll let you be hurt by a church or two, and then you'll get an attitude about church and say, well, God ain't no good. The enemy wants you to stay away from church. Let me tell you something, all churches ain't bad. It ain't the church, it's the people. They man somebody. But wherever you're broken, that's what a serpent looks for. See, Eve was broken in the Garden of Eden, and nobody knew it. What do you mean she was broken? God had made her and formed her. She was broken because curiosity broke her. Peace, Pastor Troy. Sometimes you can be too curious about things and you need to learn how to just let it be. Amen, somebody? Some of you have investigated yourself into entanglements. It's so quiet now. Okay, here's what it sounds like. I wonder what that'll be like. That right there, amen, somebody? You ain't gonna clap when you said it today, amen, somebody? Somebody walk by, you be like, mm, I sure wonder what that's like. Okay, keep on wondering. You broken. It's so quiet in here. I see how y'all looking at me today. Somebody say, where we're spiritually broken? Watch this. It's where we're spiritually open. I'm dropping so many nuggets today, I don't even know if y'all get half of them. Where we're spiritually broken is where we're spiritually open. 
These are the points of manipulation that the enemy looks for in every single one of us, which is why you got to get yourself together. You got to get healed and you got to get hold and you got to get it fast. Because the longer you're broken, the more you stay open. That's why they were able to creep up on you and sneak up on you. That's why you were open to certain things that you said you would never do. You ain't going to say nothing, but I'm in here today. There were things that you swore, you looked at other folks saying, I can't believe they did that. Oh my God. But the enemy recognized that you had a brokenness and an openness and you found yourself in the same place doing the same thing you said you would never do. See, church folk love to come to church and jump and shout and leave here and don't get healed. They mad somebody? Like going to the mechanic, your car tore up and you just drive through, but you don't let them fix nothing. You in here today, you need to say, God, here, let me raise my hood up. Anything need to be repaired, fix it, God. If my mind is broken, fix it, God. If my heart is broken, fix it, God. If my faith is broken, fix it, God. Somebody say, fix it, God. Fix it, God. Devil, you can't stop this message, so you do whatever you want to do, because I'm going to preach it anyway. When I tell y'all the devil don't want y'all to get this message, but you're going to learn today, you're going to get it. That's why the Bible is important. Somebody yeah. say the Bible is important. The Bible is important. When's the last time you looked at the Bible and just read scripture after scripture after scripture and said, whatever I read today, I'm going to believe today. Yes, yes. So let me tell you something. It's more than just a book, y'all. There is power in the word of God. I wake up every day and I put my face in that Bible. Why? Because it's hard enough with the word in you. Come on, somebody. I don't want to know what it's like and I ain't got no word in me. Come on, somebody. So every day I'm feeding my spirit. Every day I'm trying to line up with the word of God. Why? Because there's power in the word of God. I grew up old school and I grew up around a lot of old people. When I was 16, most of my friends were 60 years old. I kid you not. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up because I wasn't a part of the cool kids club. I wasn't popular. So I found a lot of friendships in senior citizens. I would go to sit at old people's house and just talk to them for hours or go pick up their groceries and then talk to them for hours. My best friends were 50, 60, 70 years old. And I remember one of my old mothers in the church had a problem with snakes. She lived in an in a old, one of them called shotgun houses. And this is what it was, guys, where you could kind of see through it. I, I kid you not. And, and she had a problem with snakes. She had a problem with snakes. The snakes would come in. While we were talking, while we were talking, snakes would come in. And she was looking at, look at that, Troy. That's me. I'm hollering. Ah! She said, no, no, they just, they just come in. It's old ragged house. She said, don't worry, I got some for them. One day she had uh, a snake come in while we were talking. She shooed in my way. Then she went and grabbed the bag. I'll never forget it. See, sometimes God lets you see things in the past so you can use them in the future. And, and I've never used this, but I'm about to use it today. She went and got this big old burly sap. It was a big old sap, and it had some white stuff in it. She said, come outside with me, Troy. So we outside, we just walking around. And while we walking and talking, she's sticking her hand in the bag, throwing this stuff on the ground. She's just walking, talking, throwing stuff on the ground. I'm, I'm in quiz. I'm like, mother, what is in the bag? She said, oh, that's just some sulfur. I said, what? I'm on city ball. See, that's just sulfur. She said, when I put this sulfur down, what it does, it repels the snakes. Last night, I decided to research it. I took her word for it some 30, 40, 50 years ago. But last night, I decided to research it to make sure she didn't lie to me. And would you not believe that when you put down powder sulfur around your house, when snakes slither across it, it irritates their skin so they will not return. I just said something. I just said something. You got to hear your pastor today. Pastor, what's your point? The word of God is just like powder of sulfur. You got to throw it around your house. You got to throw it around your life. You got to put down the word of God everywhere you go. So when the devil comes across it, it irritates him. Okay, I'm about to say something that you ain't going to like. When snakes are comfortable around you, you need some sulfur, baby. You need some word. You need to spend most of all ain't going to clap in here today. When Jesus showed up, the snakes called the devil were uncomfortable. Why have thou come to torment us? Is what they said when Jesus, and Jesus was like, anybody ain't stunning y'all. I'm here chilling. Because Jesus was the walking sulfur of God. Give God praise if you got it. Say, neighbor, put that word down. Get in it and throw it out there. Can I share something with y'all? This is why you lost some of your friends this year. You ain't gonna clap. You decided to get closer to God. You decided to seek God's face. You decided to pray more. What you was doing, you was throwing down that spiritual sulfur and them frenemies that you was calling friends with nothing but snakes, you just didn't know it and they can't come around you no more. 
the soul and stuff down. <laughs> 